I, I think the internet especially can feel like there's such a short shelf life and it's mm -hmm. like if you get a couple videos in a row that like don't perform as well, it's like I guess I'm washed now. I guess people don't mm -hmm. care about me anymore. This episode is sponsored by BetterHelp Online Therapy. Visit betterhelp.com slash Padilla because sometimes existing is exhausting. Hello, Drew Gooden. Hello, Anthony Padilla. I've had you on the show before, mm -hmm. five years ago. Uh, I'll never and, forget it. Uh, you'll never forget that moment, right? Mm -hmm. And you were on for modern legendary YouTubers. That was when you were kind of fresh in the YouTube space. Yeah, I think it was meant to be like tongue in cheek that we were legends when we yeah. were only like a few months into it. But I'm pretty sure a lot of people took it seriously. Oh like, yeah. These aren't legends. Like, That's not a legend. PewDiePie is the legend. But you have over 4 million subscribers and over 800 million views now, so mm -hmm. legend. So I think I'm reaching legend status. I preemptively did that as, yeah. a, as a form of manifestation. Right, and, and we can now apply that retroactively to that. That episode, mm -hmm. I was a future legend, a legend to be. You got your start on a different platform that is now dead. And I started Vine, I think Vine started in like 2013. I didn't start until like 2015, so a couple years in. So I missed those early days where you could just put the dumbest shit on there and get so popular. Your stuff I, had substance. Oh yeah, it was like, art. It was a thick six seconds. See, the thing with six seconds is like, that's not a lot of time, but I would re there were some vines that were so convoluted because I was trying to cram in like five jokes into six seconds. There's one in particular, I remember I was like going at a drive through and I was speaking so fast because I had this whole thing and it's like, I'm watching it back and it's like, this is just nonsense. It's just like word vomit. Uh, but I started on vine, got, kind of big on there. I mean, it was certainly like validation at that point in my life. It's not something I ever made money off of or thought like, oh, I'm going to be a professional Viner or anything like that. But like the value a, came in confidence. Absolutely. Yeah. Ego as a, like, a, you know, in my early 20s and like wanting to get into comedy, wanting to, you know, but not knowing how, like I always wanted to like be an entertainer. Like as a kid, I'd watch Disney Channel. I wanted to be one of the actors on there and that never came to be because I never attempt, you have to like audition. They're not mm. just gonna like email your mom. And <laughs> You're like, like, maybe someday <laughs> they'll email my mom. I was every day I'd go to the mailbox <laughs> and hope for uh, physical mail and then I'd check her computer for an email, mm -hmm. uh, fax machine, nothing. They never contacted me. So I was pretty pissed about that. But then Vine came around, that was an opportunity for me. Um, yeah, it, it just it felt good to like put something out and just be like, I think I'm funny, but other people think I'm funny too. I think that was the most valuable thing I got from from Vine was just that confidence. Let's take a look at some of those vines. Let's see, see, oh, no. uh, and and to destroy my confidence now. <laughs> All right, let's hear, let's hear. Okay, road work ahead. Uh, yeah, I sure hope it does. These are great without audio. I think they're better without <laughs> audio. I. Oh, uh, I was singing this little song here. Yeah. I don't, I don't remember. Hey, what are you doing? Watch me. Uh, that moment when you're, oh, that you're uh. <laughs> they See, they go so fast by the time I remember what the script is. Okay, this was about his dad invented the extension cord, but he's like, you know, you don't always need an extension cord. Uh, this one, I was mad because someone opened my Snapchat from Team Snapchat. Yeah. This one is just has the Sims music in it, I'm Oh, you're sure. hopping over the laser. Yeah, the best things in life are free. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't know what's going on with this. <laughs> this <laughs> at this point, these are some of these are like eight years old, so I don't remember. A lot of these I filmed in random hotel rooms because at the time, I had a job where I worked for a local new, or a, a company that installed local news studios. My dad's friend, a classic success story, offered me a job, yeah. and so I would travel to like Little Rock, Arkansas. And it wasn't nepotism, it was because you were qualified. I was because I was such a, <laughs> a, a budding carpenter to be. And, yeah. You know, they saw so much potential in me. Uh, These really hands look like them. they're made for manual labor. Yeah, not a single callus on those <laughs> hands. We gotta toughen you up, boy. Yeah. I mean, they did, they did. So that's why so many of them were just random hotel rooms. You had to travel around a lot? Yeah, yeah, it'd be like a week at a time. They'd build the set, take it apart, drive it there, we'd fly out. I'd install some LED lights, and that was my, that was what I did while making Vine work, because I made zero dollars from Vine. You were making, you were working two jobs, though. One was for money, and one was for... Pleasure. Pleasure. Mm-hmm. I got a lot of pleasure from Vine. You pleasured. I pleasured. <laughs> 
Fine. Fine yes. pleasure to you. Mm-hmm. Mm. In it six was... seconds, that's about right. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Never, that's all you need. Never anymore. That's all I need. Yeah. Oh, well, it is six and a half though. Let's let's. <laughs> yeah. Let, to be fair, be that honest. extra half second I think makes a big it's difference. Six and a half seconds. There's mm. common. Fit one more thrust in there. Yeah. So then you transitioned to YouTube. I sure did. Um, yeah. You thought Vine was gonna last forever though. You said. Well, a lot of people were smart. A lot of other Viners were like either because they could see it coming that Vine wasn't gonna last forever, or because they just wanted to. Uh, hedge their bets, I guess. Like, while they were still popular on Vine, they would use it to promote their YouTube, their Instagram. I never really did that. I was just like, Vine is all I need. And then uh, that really backfired because when Vine died, I had to, I went from having like 400,000 Vine followers to like, 500 YouTube subscribers. So I really kind of had to start from scratch. I think it definitely helped that some people may have found my YouTube like organically and then been like, oh, I remember that guy, he's from Vine. So that that transition helped a little bit, but it wasn't like I funneled all those people over and then was able to you know build it from there. It was kind of like, I did kind of have to figure it out again. Also because what I made on YouTube was so different than what I was making on Vine. Like mm-hmm. I was on Vine, I was just cramming three jokes into six seconds, playing two characters in a sketch kind of thing. And then on, on YouTube, the thing that worked for me was just sitting down and, and yapping about something for like 15 minutes, just mm. whatever I was kind of annoyed about at the time. I found a brand new audience from doing that. And I also think that I that's more suited for, for my personality and like comedy style is just to be able to write longer jokes and not have to have the time constraint of trying to cram it all into a couple seconds. And also people get to know you a little bit more when you're, you're sitting down and talking. It's like you can showcase your personality and you're not just like playing a character or something for a few seconds at a time. Yeah, did you have any heads up that Vine was going away? Uh, or did not you find all. out with everyone? Yeah, I found out from like a tweet. I mean, it didn't like shut down like the day they announced it, but I think they were like, uh, it will shut down in a month. But even without like a warning sign, I should have known because like viewership had really kind of fallen off. Like, I think my channel had kind of stagnated on Vine. There's only so much you could do really. I think like TikTok took what was good about Vine and kind of expanded on it. And it's like, now there's so many different types of content on TikTok, but with Vine, you were so restricted that I think people were just like, and there was no money in it too. So there was like less incentive for creators to keep putting all their time into it. And I didn't necessarily start like doing longer rants or whatever, because I thought like this will uh, make me famous. I was just like, I think I saw like Cody Ko was doing it at the time and like some uh, H3 and some other commentators, you know, I was like, I think I could do that. That'd be fun. And it was just like a fun thing to do. And then a few months later, it was, it was the exact right time to be doing that because that is when the algorithm was like, oh, people like to be mad at stuff. Yeah, because it, really, it was promoting the kind of uh, rage culture. Yeah. Like, oh, that's cringe. This is stupid. We hate this guy yeah. kind of mentality. Yeah, that's what a lot of my early videos were. It was like life hacks. How dumb are these? They're not even useful. Relatable comedies, the death of comedies. That was like one of my first videos. I made one called like, why is YouTube music so bad? It was like, it was everything was just like, this sucks. Mm-hmm. And then, yeah, that be, kind of became my thing for a while it was like, Here's what I'm mad about this week. You know? Yeah, I mean, was it tempting to keep making that? Because that was what was popular. For sure. I mean, and I enjoyed doing it. I think, like, in moderation, it's good to to vent a little bit. It, w- it would be, like, uh, something I was legitimately kind of annoyed by or a creator that maybe I felt like was doing shitty things. Do you feel like you were more angry around that time of your life because you were making content centered around being angry? I think so, yeah. I think also... Maybe I went into it with some bitterness too of just uh, like, just being young and feeling like I deserved something that I didn't quite have yet. I I don't know, maybe like wanting to be famous, but like, I don't know, that sounds like really narcissistic. I I don't think I ever like was like, man, why, why aren't I famous? I was like, I think if I got, I think if I could just get some exposure, people would think I'm funny, you know? But I think when you're younger, it's, it is easier to just kind of be pissed off about stuff all the time. Yeah, well, and it's and also like, I don't understand that, so I hate it. I think what I really love doing, like the video that I spent probably the most time on 
this past year was I made one about Star Wars. But what mm. I really liked about that video, or what I really liked about making that video was talking about Andor, a show that I love, and talking very passionately about something that I think is good. And mm. the point of the video isn't like, this shit sucks. It's like really focusing on what I, I like about a show. And it's so fun to talk about something you're really passionate about in a positive way. It's, it's a much better headspace to be in. It's a better like impact to have. To, to just share things that you love. But if I do want to be mad about something, it's like, the, oh man, there's so many crappy overpriced products that I can, mm -hmm. you know, I get advertised all the time and people are curious about, like I keep getting an ad for this, this beanbag chair and it's $300 and it's like that, I, there's no way it's worth that. And I'm like, don't worry, I'll try it. So you and, don't have to. So you don't have to kind of thing. That's like a definitely a fun niche that I, I found myself in. We have a, a couple products that we're gonna open up. Hell yeah. Right now, uh, crappy overpriced products <laughs> to see if they're worth it. Awesome. So you don't have to. And what are they? Uh, let's find <laughs> out. <laughs> uh, so what the fuck is this? So we have bacon bandages. Okay. Uh, bandages shaped like bacon for when you get a boo-boo, but you also Wanna, um, but you want it to look like there's just raw bacon, raw bacon on your arm. Raw bacon slabs on you. There's a few things I love about this. Yeah. Uh, I love that it specifies they're sterile because oh, that, that was my concern going yeah. in that it would like just have like uh, bacteria bacon, bacon all over grease it. On yeah, it. bacon grease. And also there's a free prize inside. So <laughs> Why is there a free, free prize in a bacon band-aid container? Is what it, could it be? Like, a, like they don't even tell you what it is. I know, yeah, I guess. Uh, well, it's to, it's to get you to, to want to buy yeah, it off yeah, the shelf, it I up. guess. Open it yeah. up. All right, we'll open it together. Yeah. Okay, so these are the... <laughs> That's actually pretty good quality. Yeah. And the, the shape I... isn't just a Band-Aid shape. It's actually cut out in the shape of bacon. Yeah, no, yeah, you're right. It's like it's got some some curves to it. Yeah. Like, I'm really good at opening stuff. I've had a lot of practice. It does kind of look like, like there is a little... Uh, Bacon grease that was left in here, though, for realsies. How's it smell? Sterile? Uh, yeah, it smells like a, a pig that's still alive. Oh, good, good. I'll just I hear that right pig meat there. tastes closest to human meat. Mmm, can't yeah. wait to find out. Mm -hmm. uh, I already know what human meat tastes like, oh, but yeah. I've never had bacon before. All right, well, what do you think the free prize is? <laughs> is it a sticker or a temporary tattoo? Uh, it is a sticker oh. of. Is it a pig? No, it's a dog. It's a dog. Makes me concerned that they think bacon comes from dogs. Why is there a dog in there? I don't know, man, but that's for you. Oh, this is a temporary tattoo. Oh, it's not a sticker. It's a okay. temporary tattoo, nice. so I'm about to have a little doggy on my neck. Hell yeah. Let's see. How How is he looking? <laughs> oh, that's the cutest thing I've does ever it, seen. Does it work? Wait, it turned out so good. <laughs> is it good? It's actually, that is a crisp tattoo. Yeah? The, the, Every detail okay. remains. If this video gets 100 likes, I'll get it permanent. <laughs> All right, you guys know what to do. I don't know if it's gonna get 100 likes, though. Probably not. It's just a Drew Gooden interview. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I have no idea what these are. Oh, it's cold and wet. Is it a cold comp? What is it? So there's there's like little nubs and knobs. I'm taking it thing. apart. This oh. is supposed to be soothing? Oh. Wow, ice cube. Wow. Oh. Can you believe water, it becomes a solid when you get it cold enough? Yeah, can and you believe how wet my arm is so whoa. fast? Your arm is <laughs> dripping wet. Okay, well. Um, cool. Cool. Well, that's great. Should we Do you... make them touch? <laughs> wow. Okay. <laughs> that's, good to, that's good for future reference. Okay, cool. So in your segments, do you usually give some kind of rating or review, or do you just um, plow through them? So when, when I made my first one at the end, I did like a tier list of everything. Yeah. But no one really gave a shit at that point. Cool, so this, we're never speaking about that again. Yeah. I mean, I think maybe we say at the same time yeah. what we are rating. Okay. Out of anything, you do not have to specify one, two, three, Hamburger four. hot dogs. What? Four. Okay, I said hamburger hot dogs. Okay. All right, All right next thing. <laughs> Ooh, hot, oh. Oh, wow, I, I predicted the hot dog, I guess. Hot dog candy cane. Is it supposed to taste like a hot dog? Where, it just looks like a candy cane. Do you think it's minty? Maybe like the white part is mint it's, and then the pink part is hot dog? It's got a plump and juicy hot dog, candy cane. Um, 
Ingredients is sugar, corn syrup, water, artificial flavor, and uh, artificial colors. Yeah. Not a single hot dog element. Right. Uh, it sounds like the same ingredients it would be in it's a, a normal regular candy cane. candy cane. But I still have to taste it, of course. I th- this looks like the kind of prize you would get in like a claw machine. And you're like, ah, I was going for the the hot dog plushie, but I got stuck with hot dog candy cane. You wanna take a whiff? I don't Whoa. think that's there is a scent to it that's not candy cane. It smells almost like buttery. It's it smells like, like popcorn. Yeah, popcorn. I was yeah. Uh, you know, okay. I'm gonna have to get in here. Yeah, too. I'll, I'll wait. All right, let's let's. let's I'm gonna bust it open. There's still okay. more shit to open. <laughs> okay. We're gonna be throwing up from this. Oh, f- why does that stink? It literally smells very bad. Yeah, it smells like it smells like uh, popcorn that's been on the floor, actually. <sighs> yeah, that's all right. <sighs> this, I don't think the FTC approved this, but let's go. It's so good. <laughs> wow, delightful. It's so good. I'm never putting that mm. near my mouth again, I don't think. Mm. <laughs> yeah, I'll get, dig in there. All right, kitchentools.com. What? Oh, oh, are these like... Uh, I've always wanted this. Oh, they're lobster. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, they smell used. Oh, you want me to get in it? there? Okay, I'll get in there. Wow. Yeah, it's. Uh, wow. That looks it great. It works. Oh, it's biting me. Does yours? Does yours bite? Mine's not biting. Yeah, I think. Well, this is going on wiki feet. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would say this is the most. Uh, this is the best one. This is the best item yet. It's the most I do, usable. It's one. most usable. Yeah. yeah, yeah. If I'm looking to go out, like just a really quick drive down to the mall, you know. Yeah, I was thinking like if you're just walking outside to get the mail real quick or something. Oh, like sure. You would walk around in the mall wearing these. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, if, if it was just a quick little thing. So I want them to know that like I'm a little cool but a little freaky. Yeah. Hell yeah, yeah brother. Final product, and they've just been getting progressively better. Yeah, I think so. This is yeah. actually, I'm really excited for this. And oh, I can right. still taste the candy cane. It's it gets like, better. It, it's it's sitting in there for It sure. sits there, it doesn't dissipate. Okay, uh, this is a set, do not separate. Lots of writing in other languages. The best products always have lots of descriptions in every language yeah, possible. Yeah, that's so you know they're like an international sensation. Yeah, here, you take two, I'll take two. So these are a full set, let's take a look at them. Yeah. Oh. Um, oh. Are these a? Is this a severed baby head? You guys got an ad for this? <laughs> what the? F- is oh. Oh. Wait. They oh, have different, different facial faces. expressions. I was gonna say okay, mine is in a lot of distress. Mine could never be happy. I think mine just licked the hot dog candy cane. This one's in like a kind of like neutral state. Uh huh. Okay. That one's kind of got like an evil smile a going bit. on, right? But he yeah. has no teeth yet. So we got a description here. And it is <laughs> funny human face emotion, emotion stretch, stretch balls, balls scented, scented fidget, fidget toys, stress, stress relief, relief squeeze ball, stress toys, toys for kids and adults, sensory toys for autism, autism anxiety, anxiety relief, relief, heal your mood, mood white, white depressed. depressed. <laughs> so these are for white <laughs> depressed people? Perfect, we're the target audience. <laughs> Are you frustrated because you don't have the perfect wardrobe to match your ever-evolving lifestyle? Whether you're getting ready for vacation or simply you're bored of your old style choices, the stylists at Stitch Fix make sure you always have something to wear. Stitch Fix is the best way to shop new styles and brands. Think of them as your style partner. Your stylist will learn about your tastes and collaborate with you on looks that you love without breaking the bank. You simply share your preferences, style, and budget, and Stitch Fix sends you five items in a fix right to your door. They have over a thousand brands and styles, so no matter what season you're in, Stitch Fix has you covered. And with a wide variety of sizes, they'll find the perfect fit. Plus, you get to try on everything at home, keep what you like, and just send the rest back. Over time, Stitch Fix and their stylists will match you with greater precision based on your likes and dislikes. So if you want style that makes you feel as good as you look, get started today at stitchfix.com slash Padilla. That's stitchfix.com slash Padilla. Stitchfix.com slash Padilla. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. Do you ever feel like your brain is getting its own way? Like you know what you should do, 
or what's good for you, but you just can't seem to do it. Therapy helps you figure out what's holding you back so you can work for yourself instead of against yourself. As I'm sure many of you know, I've been a huge advocate of therapy since I started going about six years ago. It's helped me in almost every facet of my life. Whether dealing with anxiety or depression or just the day-to-day -day struggles of being human, therapy has been a guiding light for me. So if you've been thinking about starting therapy, BetterHelp might be perfect for you. It's 100% online and it's designed to work around your schedule. All you have to do is fill out a brief questionnaire and you'll be matched with a certified and licensed therapist. Plus you can switch therapists at any time for no additional cost. Celebrate the progress you've already made and give BetterHelp a try. Visit betterhelp.com slash Padilla today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P.com slash Padilla. Now back to the world of Drew Gooden. So is that pretty much what your segments are like? To a T, man, you nailed it. And that's what it would be like if you worked with a group of people to help you produce Yeah, that was so videos. easy. That maybe that would be the next step is like having people find products for me so I can have like a live reaction. I right. think that is maybe something that is missing from those videos just cause like I'm, I'm finding all this stuff. I already have an idea of what it's gonna be when I get it. But if I could just be surprised with a mountain of crap like that, yeah. now that's content. Because you're doing everything yourself. Yeah, I do everything videos. myself. Yeah, I do. I come up with the ideas, which is why they suck. Uh, no. Which is why sometimes they're good and other times it's like, that's what you're making a video about? I don't know. I've tried my best. Um, but yeah, I write them. I, I star in them. It's me. Mm -hmm. uh, and I edit them myself. How much time does it take you to... Because to, you're releasing like one a month? I do one a month. I... Uh, I could do more. I used to do more. I think I have at this point built in time for me in between videos where I'm not working because I think it's important to just have uh, to kind of recharge a little bit. Um, anytime I try to like overcommit to brand deals or too many, do too many things, I end up like putting out videos I'm not super happy with and then I'm more burnt out and then it's like I feel like I need to take a break anyway. And if I work really hard on something and I, you know, it's I think it's it's good to take a couple days to just like read the comments and feel good about yourself and, you know, pat yourself, yourself on the back because you, you can be proud of something you spent a lot of time on and then, you know, and then move on to the next thing. So I kind of like build that in. For the most part, like I'm writing every word of my videos, that'll take me a couple weeks. And then for the most part, then I can film it and edit it in like two days. It's really mm -hmm. just like the writing it, conceptualizing it, trying to plan everything out so I can be as efficient as possible with the rest of it. Because when I started, I used to just sit down, no script, just rant and I'd be all over the place. And then it would take me like two weeks to edit it. Cause I'm like, I'm not even, I'm saying things an hour in that I'm taking a mental note to actually put earlier right. in the video, but then I don't remember by the time I go to edit. I was like, so you're shooting like two to... hours of content, cutting it down. Yeah, like that's what I would always do, and it was so unorganized. I'd be, I would repeat myself a lot because I'm not thinking about what I'm saying until I'm editing it, and it's mm -hmm. like I, that. I, that just didn't really work for me. Um, yeah, but, you mentioned yeah. the comments having some kind of value to you. Do you do the comments like affect you? I would say if it's a video that I've really spent a lot of time on and I really think is good, then I will read a lot of the comments and I will uh, enjoy the praise that comes with it because it feels good. You know, it's sure. like, it's, it's when you, the harder, and I would say the, the more I work on a video, the longer I allow myself to just sit in that like self-congratulatory period. Mm -hmm. If I only work a little bit on a video, I'm not gonna be spending a week just reading comments that are blowing spoke up my ass or whatever. <laughs> so like, it's more like the more that it meant to you. Yeah, the, the more, more that you wanna. For sure, the more it's like, cause it's, it feels good to, to be praised. Be, yeah, be praised. <laughs> it's crazy when people compliment you, it feels good. Um, but I really only do that for videos where like I feel like I deserve it. Cause there's some where it's like, I, I'm not the most consistent with quality, I don't think. Some of it is like, I am gonna make a video this month. I don't love this idea. I'll do my best with it, but it's not something I'm like super passionate about. So those I'm not gonna sit there and read all the comments and be like, you know, cause I'll probably see a comment where it's like, this one wasn't that good. And I'll be like, you're right, I agree. And I'll get like depressed. <laughs> so it's like, I'll just, when I make a video like that, I'll focus on the next one. Yeah, and, I, and, and speaking to, to people about this, it seems like the more value that you give the praise, the more value that you inadvertently give the, the, the negative, negative comments yeah, absolutely. as well. Because like you hold them with the same value. For sure. I think, yeah, that's why ultimately it's like, yeah, if it's a video I love that I think is worthy of praise, I will allow myself to read the praise. 
Um, and I, I'm, it's easier to brush off a negative comment because it's like, well, they just don't agree with me. And it's like, I'm not going to be like, oh, right. that guy thought I was wrong. It's like, but this is my opinion. But if you're not happy with a the video, then yeah. you'll see that comment that exactly. says that they're not happy with it. And you're like, ah, oh, I knew it. I knew it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. It, it's, it's, it starts with kind of my own opinion of it um, that I'm just getting validated either way, whether it's positive or negative. Yeah. And you were kind of saying that it feels like every video, like whenever you're any kind of artist mm -hmm. uh, it, it feels like everything that you make needs to be better than the last yeah, thing you definitely. made because you want to have you want to feel like there's that growth that progression mm -hmm. so do you get caught up in that as well like ah oh, but it needs to be better than the last of one of course yeah you always feel like you need to be making something better but that's just not human nature that's like some months you're just like I don't know this is what I got this month and it, it maybe it's not as good as something I made a year ago but it's like maybe you'll make your the best video you ever make like a year in and then you want to do it for another 10 years it's like you can't just be like man I've, I've yet to make anything as good as that like think of all the musicians who close every concert with a song they wrote 20 years ago I think the important thing is to just make stuff that you're happy with and and that is fulfilling uh, to you but yeah it's hard when like I put out something I'm really passionate about and I'm excited about. And then the double-edged sword of that is like, after a couple of days of patting myself on the back, it's sort of like, well, shit, mm -hmm. I don't have any, like there's only so many things I'm super passionate about that I like want to make a video where I spend every waking hour while I'm working on it, thinking about the video and thinking about how I can make it as good as possible. It, sometimes it's just like, well, here's a bad movie I can make fun of. It's something I, I, I struggle with for sure. Just wanting to always like, be better, you know, improve. It's like, I think the internet especially can feel like there's such a short shelf life. And it's mm -hmm. like, if you get a couple videos in a row that like don't perform as well, it's like, I guess I'm washed now. I guess people don't mm -hmm. care about me anymore. Um, and it's, it, it uh, but I try, I try to keep it in perspective where I'm like, even if I plateau, it's like, okay, so I'm getting 2 million views regularly. On it. Like, that's awesome. Like, why, why is it that we always have to be better? Like, what, it's like, you get so used to growing and then at a certain point, you go as, you grow as much as you will. And then it's like, you gotta keep your expectations in check, which is easier said than done. Mm -hmm. But it is something, the longer I've done it, the more I'm like, just try to be like, I'm I'm so lucky to get to do what I'm doing and have people care for as long as they've had they have mm -hmm. you know and and click on video a video that's way different than the thing that they are used to but it's like they like they want to watch it because they like me they want to give me a chance to talk about something that maybe they didn't care about like it's something I think about but I'm like at the end of the day I'm like I love what I do and I'm I'm really happy to get to do it and just kind of like this is what I want to talk about this month and if you're mm -hmm. interested in it then you can watch it if not. Wait till next month. It requires so much discipline to continue creating the videos and, and doing every single element yeah. that you put into it. Have you always been like that? You you kind of mentioned that you weren't you were kind of more like lazy in high school. Yeah, right? well, I mean that still that still crops up for sure. Um, but I, I think I think the hardest thing about my job, or one of the hardest things, is just that like there is, it is just like no one's gonna hold me accountable necessarily. Like I don't have a boss and it's great to not have a boss. So I, mm -hmm. I say that with like, I love the position I'm in, but it's also like, I, I really need to be my own parent or my own, you know, adult in the room to be like, all right, we're gonna set a schedule, mm -hmm. like no video games this morning. You're gonna, first thing you do, have some coffee, sit at your computer, start writing. Mm -hmm. Like, just because you don't feel like you're that creative right now. It's like, you. part of it is just forcing yourself to sit down and do it. And then, hey, I, I didn't even, think I had a page of a script in me, but I did because I sat down and forced myself mm -hmm. to do it. Like, that's something that I think I've gotten better at. Um, also just separating my work life from my life, you know, like I, I'm pretty good about like, you know, my wife Amanda still has a, a nine to five job because that she she loves it. And so, but I've gotten better about like, scheduling it so our our days are compatible. So like when right. she comes home, I'm, I'm done right now. And like, I, maybe if I have more stuff to do, we'll have dinner together and I'll work on it later, but I'm not gonna be like, sorry, I gotta focus on this because I procrastinated this morning, mm -hmm. you know? Um, mm -hmm. That's something I think I've gotten better at with age, whereas, I mean, high school, I barely went to school. I would like, I would come up with any excuse to just like, be like, uh, my head hurts, I can't go. And my mom would be like, all right, I guess. This is like Same. the third day this week. I feel like it really matters about like what you are interested in because mm -hmm. even when I would go to high school, half the time I wasn't paying attention to the classes, I was, 
I was already doing Smosh stuff yeah. uh, then, but it was like a website. And mm -hmm. I was like designing merch so I could fund the the website. Yeah. And that's where all of my energy was going. I was like, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, history about that thing. Okay, yeah, but anyway. Right. I'm yeah, and you get labeled as like lazy because you're not putting. Cause, and the grades are lower, so then you're seen as lazy. Yeah, because you're not putting enough effort into something, but it, that doesn't mean you're incapable of putting it. It's just you just don't have the passion for it. Like, yeah. I think I'm an extremely hard worker when I'm working on a video that I'm like obsessed with because mm -hmm. it's all I want to do to a fault almost where it's like I'll be mid conversation and I'll just think of something as wait I got to go write this down real quick before it, mm -hmm. it you know um, that's where I'm like I, it because it doesn't feel like work that's when you know I love being in that headspace I love when I'm working on something and it's like it doesn't feel like work because it's just exactly the only thing I can even think about wanting to do right now mm -hmm. um, whereas in school is like ah, I don't know that which School is important. You should put in more effort than I did. But ultimately, the the talks that I had with teachers where they'd sit me down and be like, what the hell, man? You, you're right. too smart to be like getting a D in this class. Mm -hmm. Like, you're not applying yourself at all. And in my head, I'm like, I'll show you one day. Like, it worked have out you, Have eventually. you showed them? Oh, yeah. I, I showed up at their house and I yeah. said... And I brought my uh, one million subscriber plaque, mm -hmm. and I was like, "Yeah, read it and weep." Total asshole move. No, mm -hmm. I didn't. Do that. You're like no, twenty-four they, uh, karat gold, bitch. Yeah, I think it's also important not to like have your entire life revolve around it because then it do, it everything feels like even more important. But if you can like like, there's other aspects in my life that I can be happy with. It's you know, and so it isn't just like all or nothing. Like. Uh, I'm I'm refreshing until it gives me the ranking. Ah, oh, ten out of ten. Mm -hmm. I can't. I'm gonna be miserable now. It's like, yeah, but like, I, let me just. I'll just let me not. Let me turn my computer off and go hang out with my wife or my cat or go outside and go for a walk. It's like mm -hmm. just. It's not the end of the world. Yeah. Well, well, Markiplier was on here last year and he brought up a good point. He was saying like it's you really have to constantly be refilling your cup. You're, yeah. You're, you have a certain amount of your creative juice in there mm -hmm. and if you're constantly pouring it out and you're obsessing over every detail of it you're never refilling it you have to take that moment away yeah absolutely yeah i think about that with like stand-up comedians too it's like you have to live a life to be able to, to make a on. joke about it yeah, yeah. You, if you're just like doing shows forever it's like you're not then are your jokes just going to be about the shows you did? He's like, yeah. you got to like have a crappy experience at the airport sometimes to be able to be like, actually, this is a funny video idea, or this mm -hmm. is like, I could, I've got a joke here. But you got to make enough money to fly somewhere, and then you got to have somewhere to go. And yeah. Then, but then, so you need the comedy career. And then, <sighs> You're right. <sighs> just give up. That's my advice. Just lay in bed, never get up. <laughs> Sleep forever. Mm -hmm. It's easier that way. It's easier. <laughs> I didn't ask to be born. That's true. Why is it my problem? What a you gave me the gift of burden. <laughs> anyway, thank you so much. Yeah, man, that was awesome. <laughs> that was great. I'm glad that you uh, had a way to, to to bandage your wounds. Yeah, no, this is. Yeah. I'm gonna wear these forever. I feel healed both on the outside and the inside. My soul has been reborn thanks to the bacon strip band aids, who are sponsoring today's video. That's right, and I feel I feel reborn as well because. I got new ink. I think it's the best tattoo you've gotten so far. Thank you. That means a lot. <laughs> I figured.